What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, but most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Hit that thumbs up icon with your host, Comp, and... Willie. And today's film is... <laughs> I couldn't think of a name. Uh, Willie's Wonderland 2021. Willie's Wonderland 2021. A quiet drifter is tricked into a janitorial job at the now condemned Willie's Wonderland. The, the mundane tasks suddenly become an all-out fight for survival against a wave after a wave of demonic animatronics. Ooh, nice. Fists fly, kicks land, titans clash, and only one side will make it out alive. Directed by Kevin Lewis. Hear my enthusiasm? Written by G.O. Parsons. Yeah, starring you Nicholas sound Cage, really Emily Tosta, and Beth, and Beth Grant. Uh, why'd you pick Willie's Wonderland? Why? Why? Because <laughs> Nicholas Cage... Oh, okay, I see. No. Part of Nicholas Cage's reemergence, or has he really ever gone away? Where he he's never gone not, away. He's always been well. He'll there. make a movie or two, um, and people will like start doing backflips. Did you ever see um, it could happen to you? Is that the one about the lottery ticket based on a true story? Yeah. Would you have done that? It's would nice. you have won the lottery and then be, uh, told the woman you would give half of it to a, a waitress? Not half, but I would have given her some if I promised. I would have given her like a hundred grand or something. Uh, it boggles my mind. It's, it, in real life, like if if the guy, I don't, that guy must have been religion. I mean, if I promised half, I guess I would. But like, I would never. You know what he should have done? Like he should have won that lottery, and then he would have bun, like bought a whole bunch of scratch tickets, and like it won five dollars, and they'll <laughs> give her the winning for that <laughs> one instead. Because I didn't lie. I didn't or lie. Or he like. He buys like a bunch of people's homes and then kicks them out homeless. <laughs> See, Danny says that like that's a joke, but that's like actually happens. So, um, oh boy, that's that's New York. So Go Willy's on. Wonderland. This is a movie that months months ago. Because obviously Danny doesn't pay attention to the uh, chats that we have on with Thea on our like our, our already constructed. I don't. Chats. I ignore you. And guys. I go, boy, oh boy, Willy's Wonderland. What a piece of shit. I, I I'm just telling you guys this so we never have to review it. And yet here we are. Did you? I say absolutely that? did because I had seen. I had gotten a half an hour or forty minutes into the movie and I was like, this is not for me. And then of course, because. Uh -huh. uh, and the weird thing is, well, you know what? I'm happy we for did. Danny having me witness such a tragedy so close to the anniversary of 9/11. This is, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget. You made me. You've made me watch horror. Um, absolutely atrocious. Movies. I'll never forget that you made me watch this movie. Anyway, let's see some. That's some. This isn't the. This is not even see, in the Danny, top was, twenty of the worst movies we've ever done. Uh, it's up there for me. Um, so Willy's Wonderland. Uh, Tell me about it. What, what's going on with this movie? <laughs> I don't want to talk about this piece of shit. Um, I mean, that one paragraph you read sums up the whole movie. Yes. Yeah, so it's about a guy who goes to this place to thinking he has to clean to pay off $1,000, which immediately anybody with common sense would be like, you're going to pay me $1,000 to clean for 12 hours? No, it was to, it was to get his no car sense. back. Yeah, but that would be like a fucking $90 an hour rate. Like, wouldn't you be suspicious? Like, hmm, why are they willing to pay me $1,000 to clean? So, Willie... Why don't they just hire a team of people for $200? So, Willie's Wonderland is essentially a rip-off of Five Nights at Freddy. Five Nights at Freddy is a... I've heard of that, but I don't know what the Five hell Five Nights is. at Freddy is a video game. I think you could play it on... Uh, you could purchase it online. Like, it's you could play it on all, all platforms of video game uh, consoles. And uh, I think PC... But it's essentially it's a game where you're playing a night watchman at this sort of ch with will um the Chuck E. Cheese yeah yeah so it's, that's it's itself is a ripoff of Chuck E. Cheese so uh, I don't know how like this legally works because they could just sort of it's a facsimile facsimile or I something. I mean Chuck E. Cheese didn't invent animatronics. Right. Nathan's has and that so Chuck E. Cheese is a ripoff of of Disneyland I guess so everything's a ripoff of something else. But anyway so. Yeah. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy, just to do it quickly, you're playing a night watchman. It's one of those stationary games where you're looking at monitors that are um, CCTV cameras all around the building. And you're supposed mm -hmm. to look, you're supposed to survive the night by watching. I think as soon as you look at a, a camera, 
because uh, all throughout the night, these animatronics of Freddy Foz, whatever the fuck his name is, he's like this giant bear, and there's all the a- other asshole bear animals with him, and uh-huh. they will try to stalk into your room and try to kill you. Uh, but I guess if you keep looking, I, I might be saying this completely wrong because I've never played the game, but you're supposed to look at the monitors to make sure they never come and get you, right? And then, like, it'll, if you lose, it's like a shock scare. Like, they'll, they'll jump into the frame with these robot voices. And it has a it okay. has such a gigantic following. I think it might be that Sonic the Hedgehog furry kind of crowd that likes it a lot. You know, people that like to fuck wearing animal right. costumes. Those weird. People. But there's like all these stories. I I would do it once if you know I would dress in an animal costume and pull my penis out and have sex. The the funny thing is, uh, I guess it's not that funny because I mean, it has a big LGTB LGBTQIA following and stuff like that, right? You say plus, yeah. yeah. Plus, I forgot that. Um, and recently, like the creator canceled himself, quote unquote, if canceling means anything, because they found out that he uh, he supported financially a lot of Republican candidates that were against homosexual stuff. But then he was really <laughs> then he was releasing a statement saying. I love all my followers, black, white, gay, and I'm like, then why are you putting money to it? Because <laughs> he's a religious guy, that's why. And there's a lot of people right. like that. There's just like a lot of like, uh, which is whatever. If you're gonna do that, fine, whatever. But like, understand that you're the people that follow you. So he decided to quit the company, but the company's still gonna be making Five Nights at Freddy's. They were supposed to make a movie based on Five Nights at Freddy, but that's well, they did. They made this. That's been in like for. F- Four or five years. Wait, we should stop talking about five minutes explain. first. Talk about this expl- brilliant it'll, masterpiece. It'll, it'll lead to this. So it was like five. It was supposed to be with Blumhouse Pictures. Like it should be cheap uh-huh. to make a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Like it's just a guy getting scared of robots and shit like that. But it's been for like almost five years. I don't know how long Five Nights that, that shit's been happening. And even Blumhouse can't do it. So at each night is one year. So yeah. So at that at that. <laughs> Instance, it's like when God created the, the earth. The guy who made this, uh, Willie's Wonderland, it's obviously a ripoff of Five Nights at Freddy's. And I was like, well, shit, if we're not getting Five Nights at Freddy's, I, I always knew it was some sort of like, it felt like, um, you know those people that make tor- uh, cl- uh, Sharknado and all those shitty movies? Like this is sort of like yeah, yeah. they preempted the other movie like they usually do. Um, so this is their entry into the film. And I've, I have not seen such a competently made lazy movie i've <laughs> seen in such a long time right? it's like it's like it's like everything is good but it's so stupid yeah and it's not stupid for me it's not stupid in a good way it's just like what why didn't you like i mean i, I gotta admit i kind of enjoy, enjoy I, i'm sure it. you did i think that <laughs> i think that thing the weird thing is is that the main thing like because it because it has neat like art direction in it the photographer the cinematography is like really good it's it's i think it's shot, shot in digital i mean there must be 20 shots of him crushing yeah, cans yeah. Of it's soda. very it's super repetitive because it's supposed to be like a repetitive joke of a guy cleaning up then he'll eat lunch and he'll stop everything he has some kind of he has some kind of mental issue because he has to take a break when the timer goes no matter what and i'm sure they got him for a little bit cheaper to make this movie because he doesn't have any dialogue in it i don't know if it works like that honestly i don't know if it works like that if it's cheaper because it doesn't well i was reading apparently the reason there's no dialogue is because the director or something was going to play the main role and he doesn't know how to act or something i don't know if that's i don't know if this was based on a short film or not um but uh if you want to see a film that's like a short version of this like but not this one in particular, but that carries the same sort of uh, um, storyline. There's a movie I can't think of. Okay. The f- what the fuck? Okay, this thing called. There's a song called Pandori's Pizza Palace. I just gotta look that up and know what the fucking name of the movie is. But there's a short film. Just look up Pandori's Pizza Palace, and uh, okay. oh, it's called The Hug. Look up the short The Hug. It's essentially this. It's about an animatronic panda that you know attacks a kid. And it has even a okay. better. It has a good theme song and everything, like a catchy theme song. And it's only like five fucking minutes. So this movie stretches that out by having Nicolas Cage drink grape soda or whatever the fuck he's drinking every five seconds, playing pinball, doing a goofy dance. I feel it's like essentially, it's not realistic that someone could drink that much unhealthy sugar and. Well, you ever seen strong. the? You ever see those? Uh, those I bet it's energy drinks. So I don't know if it's like sugar. I think it was just like. It gave him the power. He does to do seem very he does. hyped at the end when he's dancing. That's a great scene. Speak for yourself. 
So uh, this movie has Nicolas Cage. Obviously, uh, he he has no dialogue in the film. He's playing the janitor, um, and the other side of the film, which is, is a, I guess it's not a subplot. I guess it's just a a diverging narrative uh, with Emily Tosta, who plays Liv. Um, I was kind of mm-hmm. confused at and her mother, who is um, from Donnie Darko and yes, Little Miss Sunshine, the, the actress that like. Um, you see in everything. I'm trying to think what her name is, but she's like, um, you see her in everything. She's the one that says, I, I sometimes doubt your commitment to sparkle motion. Yeah, she's a great actor. That's uh, Beth Grant as uh, Sheriff Lund. So we find out later on, because then when they explain what Willy's Wonderland is, it's like it was a bunch of murderous. I thought they were, I guess they're not pedophiles, they were just murder, murderous they're pedophiles. They're going to make a sequel, apparently. Well, if it made enough money, I guess. Um,. This town is haunted by this Willy's Wonderland, which was a serial killer, and four of his five or six, seven of his buddies would uh, kill people randomly inside this place for satanic reasonings. And then they did all that would be a cool thing, though. Like, imagine being like a club of serial killers that kills people in a funhouse. Uh, go see the movie Haunt. Uh, if that's what you want to see. That I'll, I'll, it's reviewed this month in October, anyway. But uh, so okay. it uh, it's it's haunted and the there's some cockamamie fucking explanation of why they leave this place running to kill random did, people like a satanic ritual yeah because they think because the actual animatronics can leave the the house or leave the store and kill people outside yeah. so they decide to leave it so in. they're gonna feed it to keep them so healthy happy so obviously what nicholas cage does is just kill them one by one and repeat repeating fucking things it's just him killing people going back to clean and then we see the side story. It's just one big repeat. Like, this movie was 10 minutes long and be genius, but it's not. So, Emily Tosta yeah. is playing the secondary lead. Oh, she's also the horrible teacher in Child's Play 2. Yeah, yeah. She's in Speed. Wow, and they did they did a Child's Play thing in here where they merged their bodies into the animatronics. Uh, that, that'll be my biggest complaint about this. But she plays Liv. And the weird thing is, I think she was... Uh, sh- it's it's kind of creepy. Uh, she's a very pretty girl. She looks just like Naya Rivera. If you know who Naya Rivera is, she was this girl that was on Glee. Um, oh. And she was like... Uh, I don't know. She's, I saw she one was like a hot, she's like a hot cheerleader on Glee. Uh, but that actress like died because she swam out. Uh, that show has some fucked up shit going on with it. Like, like <laughs> a third of the cast is dead. And they were young people, like really? promising. Yeah, like one of the main guys who was like one of the most famous ones died of like a heroin overdose. Uh, one of them was like arrested for like having child porn, and then he hung himself. And then oh this God. girl who had well, I'm glad he hung himself. And those brother, that's the guy who did American Horror Story. Like that's the real American Horror Story, making that fucking show. Ryan Murphy. Yeah, Ryan Murphy. And so then he's alive. Yeah, I know. So right? he has he he's probably selling those people's soul. That's terrible. He's probably sacrificing their souls to get his show. But anyway, Naya Rivera uh, died because she took her kid out on a boat, and then she must have jumped in the water and just drowned. Uh, uh-huh. I don't know if, why anybody would go into the fucking water if they can't swim with their child, and the child was on the boat by itself the whole fucking time watching their mother drown, which is like, I can't imagine the trauma that is. That's got to be a good thing to see. So Emily Tosta looks like her, and then I think she actually ended up That's taking a up. role that Naya Rivera obviously couldn't do anymore after she passed away, and I always thought that was some weird fucking thing. So what? my biggest issue with this fucking movie, great, great art design. <laughs> I liked the uh, the uh, you know when they had the actual drawings of Willy Wonderland character and shit like that like the cart they actually yeah. like legitimate like good cartooning and stuff like that the branding looked good but then when you actually see Willy and his fucking crew of monsters and shit and when it's they the, talk it's and the shit, cheapest yeah. fucking garbage I couldn't believe how cheap that shit is I, I'm as I'm telling you this I'm raising my hand up to like accentuate my dis gust with it nobody can see it mm-hmm. i'm just letting you know that i did that because willie willie's the closest one that looks like willie and that the pirate is it a pirate guy or is it like a the knight they look like yeah he's a they knight. almost he look like actual sort of animatronics they couldn't even hire like dancers that can control their body like a you know <laughs> there's people who can do this there's people who could stand and then move their bodies robotically this is these are supposed to be fucking robots, and you can tell it's people. And this, I know this is a stupid thing to get upset about, but it like immediately broke my immersion. But it's people in suits. right. It immediately yeah, like broke my immersion, and then it does also doesn't make any fucking sense because they're robots. 
But then they'll flash back when they're showing what Willie did, whatever the fucking guy who was a satanic crazy person, he put on uh-huh. a Willie suit. And I'm like, how does this work? How does this work? Maybe he had a spare Willie suit. I'll tell you, well, I guess you can take the skin off the animatronic and do it. But then there was a part, the, the part where I, I originally saw this movie and I said, no more. I'll never see this movie again until fucking Danny <laughs> made me see it. Was when the girl's walking around and then there's a, uh-huh. a fucking, uh, the, the, the fairy character. who's cl- It's, it's oh, just yeah, a woman yeah, yeah. with the worst mask. I don't understand. Willie, yeah, it's Willie's mask design. is good. The knight's mask is pretty good. The it's like got like sort of like teeth. Even even and like the big yeah, eyes. even the gator sort of looks okay with the mask. Whatever that other I don't know if that mm-hmm. shit was a rhinoceros. The gator was cool. Who, who was like the, the woman? That was like a rhinoceros, the one that with the tongue. I guess she was a frog, I guess, or a chameleon or something like that. Yeah, I guess it was supposed to be a frog. Yeah, it kept and the, this uh, using its tongue this, to pull people. This fucking uh, fairy character design was so grossly offensive to me. I like the Mexican one. Yeah, that was that was super racist Mexican, whatever that was, <laughs> a chameleon or some shit like that, uh, or a lizard. Holy shit! This I saw because then she's fighting the girl, and the girl's throwing like these weak punches, and she I guess mm. had to move slow so the actress could look like she was running around like the ring or something, like moving and fast forward. And I couldn't tell yeah. you how I was like I watched that part and I was like, oh no no. This can't be. I can't watch this cheap shit. And the thing is, the movie looks go- like really good. Like it's shot really well. But mm-hmm. whenever those monsters come up, it had a five million dollar budget. Listen, it went all into the cinematography. I'll tell you that. It didn't go into hiring good actors and and costumes for some fucking reason. Everybody looks great. That should be the number it one. Should be the, the it's selling. Movie like this. It's supposed to be robots, and there's nothing about them that look like robots. It just looks. Why like couldn't cheap. they buy real animatronics? No, that's too stuff. much. <laughs> like, I think that's too. They're, those things are probably like ten thousand dollars each or something. There's people that collect. Yeah, ten thousand dollars. They have were, five million dollars. They were budget. called the. The Rocket Explosion. I think the original band that plays in uh, um, Chuck, Chuck E. Cheese. Cheese's. And there's people that actually... I guess they have such nostalgia for Chuck E. Cheese. I've never been in a Chuck E. Cheese, ever. So I was too it poor as a child. Yeah, they call them Rocket, uh, the Rocket Explosion. And there was a bunch of like companies that tried it. And they... Like the ch- if you look at the Chuck E. Cheese robots, that's a good name for uh, furry porn. Yeah, because <laughs> <the rocket explosion. laughs> what, what is it? What they call it in South Park when they call a dog's dick a red rocket? But um, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. but it's like uh, if you ever look at those actual animatronics, they're hideous. They're like the ugliest. Like, night. Oh yeah, no. I used to go to the Nathan's. Uh-huh. There's a Nathan's where I grew up, and they had it. And me and my friends would get high and then sit in that area and just like laugh at it. They're they're the ate. ugliest designed robots I've ever seen. Like ever. Like Disney. Like you people get mad at like it's a small world after all. Why and how like goofy the kids look in that. But it's still, mm-hmm. those are people that actually, I think these are people that knew how to do robotics and then just threw some cheap fucking, like, shit over over the robot. But here, like, they had potential to make these robots look good. I'm watching this movie because what I like about, I don't even know about Willie's, uh, about, um... You really thought about this. It's very Listen, if you come me. from an art aesthetic, right, like... I do come from an I art I know, aesthetic. and I guess you don't care about that. You care about Nicolas. That's what people came to come here. They came here to watch Nicolas Cage go crazy. And the thing is, I like Nicolas Cage as a person. He's an interesting actor that does interesting things. But there's people that would be like, oh, you gotta watch it because it's Nicolas Cage. Like, no, I, don't, I really don't have to. Um, I'll always give him a chance. So this is me nitpicking on that. It's just that... My my problem with the movie is that it's repetitive as fuck for a long movie. Yeah, it is. Um, like the action is really sluggish. Like when they're fighting, it's like yeah, amateur. Yeah, no, that that bothered me. Like they hit it and it doesn't feel like a hit. You know? Yeah, like it doesn't. They you could tell that they didn't have like everybody did their own stunts. You know what I mean? Like I wish there was more like gore and like more impact of the yeah because then like the other the other characters that come in are that are just say like for um what are they called uh like fodder army cannon fodder like they're boring the only one that was interesting was the one dude the one with the horny girlfriend like there's a girl there's an actress that was very funny there was an actress in here who was just basically playing horny like that was her character horniness like actually at one point she was going up the ladder yeah that that was her big contribution to the movie was her walking up a a ladder and her you you see an upskirt for like half a second um so i feel bad for that actor but she has to make money somehow i guess but i don't understand the idea like logically 
you know that this place is filled with satanic living Yeah, it's because that dolls. one guy who was quote-unquote all for the main girl, he was doing all that, so everybody had to pay for him being horny no, no, for No, but him. I know, but, like, these two people know for a fact that there are these He's the only one making sense. Kill them. The whole, he's the only one making and, sense. But then they go and they fuck in a room. Yeah. Because they're... And there's one of the monsters is staring at them, and they know it's staring at them. All they gotta them. do is leave the town. I guess the main girl makes sense because... How can you maintain an erection when you know that there's a satanic frog ready to kill you? I know, but with that, with that girl, would you have a problem? Maybe. Okay, fair enough. I might. Like, that is the leading cause of erectile dysfunction, is Getting your head chopped off, trying right? to kill you. Yeah, so those, char those characters are boring. There's no point to them. The one guy that, like, who's having sex with his girlfriend... He makes sense. If he actually just left the movie, I would have given them credit for that, because I've only seen that in yeah. two other movies, which was the 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 take the taking of Deborah Logan and in, and um and uh what was that that Paranormal Activity? That's the only time I've ever seen people leave a horror movie and never come back. And it, I was like, yes, oh, very right. smart. That's a funny scene when she leaves the house. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, in in which in, in Paranormal Activity. I'm no, I'm talking that. about the priest, the one that comes in and he knew it was bad. Remember, he was supposed to go. Yeah, in? yeah, and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Like, I can't help yeah. you. <laughs> he was out, and in Deborah Logan, there was a third character who was like an asshole, and I was sure. I'm trying to think if I saw. We that did. One. We reviewed it. I was sure that oh, okay. guy was gonna fucking die, and he says, "You know, what? I'm out of here," and then he just left the movie. You never see him again. I was like, "See, they're smart characters in movies sometimes," and that that's what this guy should have done. Because I like to think I'd be a smart. But of course, it led to like a a um, sex scene where a woman keeps her bra on. So I don't know if girls are comfortable keeping their bra on during sex, but uh, something that you see in movies that are R rated but not R rated, you know. So uh, yeah, that's the first thing you take off. I think that's Kaylee Cowan who plays her, and T T Rail Hill who played Bob. Uh, Bob was the only character that had any brains in his fucking head. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just the same shit over. I'm nitpicking, and you know, there's people that are going, "Oh, you should have checked your brain at the door, bro." It's Nicholas Cage, yeah. <laughs> man. It's like it is the kind of movie though that you really. Either no yeah, you either really are into it. You go in expecting it to be absurd, and you just eat popcorn. Because I've and seen, I've seen people go crazy over like Nicholas Cage, and like uh, like if all, all part of Joe Bob's uh, message board. His no, fans. I mean Nicholas Cage has much better stuff. Because it's like the re 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 the re renaissance of his work. It's like the biggest one, obviously, was Mandy. Uh, with aesthetically yeah. a fantastic movie, but I just I wasn't into it as much as everybody else because it's hyped too much. I agree, but I thought it was pretty good. And then Color... No, I thought it was a good movie, but I didn't understand... Like, Color Out of Space was cool, Color Out of Space was okay. Another thing where they... Also, he was in Mom and Dad. And that was good. And, and the, the aesthetics are really good for those type of films, but this... He has that whole freak out where he's destroying the pool table. Yeah, and I told you that's the reason why he took that movie, that and his, his monologue. So, and then here, also, the aesthetics are good to a point, and then when you actually see the robots and the fighting, it's complete shit, to me at least. And you're just like, oh man, like what the fuck? So it didn't, it didn't connect with me at all. And I like, I didn't hate the movie, but I found the movie like unnecessary. Like, yeah. Though I to agree. me, the it's most really to me the movie. most important part of a movie about animatronic robots killing you is that those robots should look fucking good. If Chucky looked mm -hmm. like shit and he was shit, like you can see his new movies, you could see those are shit. But like the first movie, I hate. Like, because people so act so. like, oh, uh, like with Child's Play movies, oh, the greatest ones are Child's Play 3 and on. I was like, no, no, the first movie is the best. Who says that? You believe me. There was people that that liked the remake over the new And I liked the remake, the new one. Well, you know what? Actually, I think 3 is actually pretty I good. I thought that, Everybody to me, I was it. the worst one for me, but I could be, you know. Really? Yeah, it could have been. The Army it could have just been like, you know, it wasn't the same Andy. I'm like a nitpicker. You like, like you, so you like Cult of Chucky better than No, 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 wait a minute. 3? I. I don't consider those movies, Danny. I don't know where you get that. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. Just so we're clear. Just so we're clear. Yes, so we're yes clear. I don't consider anything after the third movie an actual movie. I think that was just them throwing I money. I think Seed of Chucky and... Well, Bride of Chucky was like an actual movie. It just wasn't very I cool. always liked... Seed of Chucky is just absurd, and it's very funny. I, I always liked Chucky 2. Um, I, I always liked Chucky, Chucky 1 the best. Great. But Chucky 2 is because I... It was like a child going through it, and I was like, you know, I could I could uh, relate with Andy, and he's running around doing shit. But uh, the best is when he's on the um, the tread, not the treadmill, whatever they call those things. Oh, the conveyor belt. You know the yeah, and then the eyeballs belt, get put in the, the guy's face and, and stuff. Oh, See, that's so great. Good. It's great aesthetics. So this film does not have that to me. It has every other. <laughs> yeah, it has good production design. 
but it does not have good aesthetics as in the actual monsters and robots in the film. As soon as you hear the mo- the first monster say, I'm going to eat your face, and it says in that voice, it's like, oh boy, here we go. Like, uh, Yeah, and the way they move and that, that I know it's a, such a small thing to be offended by, but when everything else is just on repeat, then you, I, mm-hmm. it makes me watch that. Like, as soon as I saw that fucking, uh, that, that fairy woman, I was like, uh, this can't be for me. This is just cheap. It's cheap. I do enjoy the idea that this guy does not give a shit. And, yeah. like, he's completely relaxed playing pinball and dancing. And then, like, when he's cleaning, oh, occasionally a thing will attack him and he just deals with it instantly and then goes back See, to Nicolas clean. Cage is sort of immune to... Like when he's in a movie that's either shit because you're there to see the movie about him, so he's good regardless. Mm-hmm. He's actually a good actor, and uh, he does whatever the fuck he does. It's the movie around him if it lives up to his sort of, you know what I mean? It's like when Willem the. I don't know. He he can be bad. No, I'm sure of it. He overacts. Bad. I think when he overacts, he's horrible. But it's like. But I mean, sometimes it's great when he overacts. And I it's and I don't and I don't mean to compare him to Willem Dafoe because Willem Dafoe is like. He could sleep, and then you'd be like, damn, this motherfucker's a good actor, you know? Yeah. Now, Willem Dafoe is like, he's not um, campy. Willem Dafoe... Like, Nicolas Cage could be very campy. W- w- he can be, but when he does it, like, good camp. But Willem Dafoe was in a movie with Nicolas Cage, and it was a stupid movie. What movie? Um, dog some dog dog something. It's called Dog Something or Other. Dog Bites or some shit like that. And okay. they're in the movie together, and you know this was a piece of shit. And it was from a really prolific director who sort of is, like, in the in the ether you know with his films now he's sort of like a really respected director but he's one of those directors where you don't make money anymore so you kind of giving cheap movies mm-hmm. but anyway Willem Dafoe did that movie and I was like fuck man Willem Dafoe was great so the actor is strong doggy doggy dog. dog so the actor is very strong and also there was a third actor that I don't think was an actor but he was good in that movie so I would say it's worth it just to watch Willem Dafoe because Nicolas Cage does do some goofy shit in that movie too but, like, the actor okay. has to be the draw of the film. And, obviously, Nicolas Cage is the draw of this movie. He's fine. It's just that he's repeating the same shit over and over. And you're just like, okay, do... He doesn't get to... Paul Schrader. Paul Schrader, right. Director. Paul Schrader was, like, a very... He's very prolific director in the 80s. And then, like, I guess... Now he's getting back to his shit. Oh, he wrote Taxi Driver. Did he Did he do Gold First... Thing? Yeah, right. Did he uh, Did he do First Reformed? Yeah, because First Reformed is a fucking incredible movie. If anybody's scared... I don't see that on here. If anybody now. sees First Reformed, just go see that movie. It's, an, it's a fucking genius movie. Uh, and it's scary because it, like, becomes a horror movie about... Uh, oh, no, he did. He yeah, did. Yeah, so he go did. see... He directed it and... I yeah, I saw that movie because I saw yes. first. Everybody go see First Reform because as Ethan Hawke is fucking incredible. And for five minutes, there's this uh, a, a moment where they remind you of what global warming could do. And I, and it's not a horror movie, but I tell you, in those five minutes, it's the oh, scariest you told me about movie this I've one. seen in the longest time. Yeah, I did. I told it's, you to watch um, it, but of course, every movie I tell Danny to see, he doesn't watch. He goes and he, he watches sure The Office the for out. the 18th time. So two movies I'm telling Danny on this podcast to watch. I'm telling him to watch First Reformed and to watch the uh, the Greasy Strangler. Those are the two movies you need to see. Anyway, so back to this film, Danny. Were there, what were your biggest problems with the movie? Well, actually, I've seen like half of the Greasy Strangler, and I love. Well, I'm soundtrack. surprised. Okay, let's let's review this. Watch the whole thing. Well, I mean, let's. Uh, let's uh, my let's rating rate for this movie, I would give this a uh, a four. I would give it a lower, but. Aesthetically, it's all right, but no, I'm sorry. Production art-wise, it's good. Uh, cinematography is really good. Nicolas Cage is fine in it. Um, I, 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 I don't. Whatever. It's the, it's not gory enough. What's your, what's your I would rating? Give it a, what's your it's rating? A three though? out of ten. Uh, being a, being a sheriff that's torn in half, but your clothes don't rip. Your clothes still stay intact, even though they would slouch out. See, it's another aesthetic thing. What's your rating for Willy's Wonderland 2021? Uh, I'm going to give it a 5. Cause wow. It's, I thought you were going to give it like higher than that. Look at you. No, I, I was thinking it, but Did I, I mean, it's you? not a very good it's movie. <laughs> it really isn't. But like, it's a movie that if you have it on and you're kind of just mindlessly like hanging out with your friend drinking a beer or something this is a good movie to have on no it's not like maybe, okay you know what I give it a 6 I give it a 6 out of 10 I would say the Quadet Zones are better <laughs> no fucking way <laughs> Six you wouldn't laugh ten, at Quartet um, Zone with your friends? Come on, were you... Mastering... You are miserable. Oh, I would never watch that ever again. Mastering 
a pinball game after playing it for the seventh time in this movie. And with that Danny. And doing a dance. And with that Danny. You see how fast I was? I was like, let's get out of here. And with that Danny, what's the final word? Nomination.